So the four or five of you that watch these may be wondering, what is going on with this guy? Jordan goes like three or four years of absolute silence, and really before that I'm not like a prolific releaser. And suddenly, I'm putting out a song a week for going on three months. What happened? There's a bunch of answers to that question, but I'm going to try to talk about one of them this week, uh, and that is sort of the how answer to that question. How do I make these recordings, and how is that different than what I've done in the past? Before I can talk to you about home recording, my process of recording from home, it would probably be useful to tell you a little bit about that in general. Uh, 2021 is an incredible time to make music from your bedroom or from your house. The technology available today is truly unbelievable. And I don't mean available to people like the guy who produces Taylor Swift records. I mean available to regular consumers for a price, of course, uh, but you can actually get access to studio quality gear for consumer friendly prices in a way that just has never been possible before. How'd you do that? By downloading and maybe purchasing a digital audio workstation or DAW or a DAW. Uh, this is sort of like your studio in a box, uh, the hub at, on which you take recorded sounds and then transform those recorded sounds into what sounds like a proper production. Uh, the technology that's available now to do that is, is genuinely unbelievable. Even the most inexpensive software that you can run on a laptop or even on a smartphone or a tablet is way more powerful than anybody could have predicted 50 years ago. You've got tons of power, tons of versatility. You have the opportunity to transform sounds. The amount of power that's available when you use a digital audio workstation is kind of unbelievable. And when you think about that these things run on the machines that we keep at our homes and in our pockets, if you want to make music, there's never been a better time in history to record and produce music. Now, it's not the only time in history that people could record and produce music at home. Um, the sort of home recording industry has existed for a long time and it really boomed when Tascam or TIAC released the first Porta Studio in, I think, 1979. Uh, it ran for like $900 and it gave you the ability to record on four separate tracks and then mix it down, turn it into a song. So it's home recording is something that's been around for a long time, but the technology has taken it to a totally different universe. Where do I fit in that environment? Well, this is the thing that I've been using to record my songs recently. Basically, a digital version of the old Porta Studio that came out in the late 70s. For a lot of purposes, it's got only four tracks available. All you can do once is record them and then adjust the volume and then adjust where it kind of goes in the stereo spectrum. That's it. That's really all you can do once the sounds get in there. One of my other favorite features of this is that, as you can see down here, there's these little gray Gray dudes, those are actually microphones. You don't even need a standalone microphone to record with this device. You can just use the microphones that are right here. Yeah, they're not studio quality mics, but they're definitely good sounding mics. Uh, certainly good enough for my purposes. This thing cost me, I think I paid 120 bucks for it used. And it's been amazing. I've done all the recent like multi-track recording on that device. And I think it all sounds really good. And it's been easy to use. It's been really a fruitful process working with that device. But it's really limited in its abilities, in its feature set, in the amount of control that it gives me over the sounds that I create. Why on earth would I pick that when I could use a computer? Why would I take something with that limited feature set and use that as the basis for making my music? When so much other great technology is not only available, but very, very accessible. Now, as you might imagine, there are a bunch of good reasons for going dollless or recording using something other than a digital audio workstation. And that's exactly what I'm doing when I use that little pocket studio. The reason I'm gonna focus on today is really about 
uh, my personal history. I started recording the songs that I was writing, or trying to write, back in high school using this. You may recognize it from your own youth. That is, in fact, a toy cassette tape player. I used it and its very basic record function to do my first recording. Without sounding too precious about it, it's almost like I imprinted on that cassette player and the process of recording with that cassette player. The simplicity of just pressing the record and play buttons at the same time, playing whatever I wanted to play, rewinding and listening to that, uh, and then either keeping it or re-recording it. That process made sense to me. That process seemed to gel with what I thought I did best, which was actually playing the music that I had written. That simple workflow allowed me just to demo my final ideas without having to think about how could I make this more professional? How could I make this more perfect? When I went off to college, I was fortunate enough to get a laptop and a pirated copy of Adobe Audition, which is, or was at the time, Adobe's version of a DAW. But even with that software and that capability in my hands, on my computer, I used that software the same way that I used my old cassette tape player. You press record, you do your performance, play it back. If it sucks, you re-record it. If you like it, you keep it. And that's it. Somehow, through I guess my own ignorance about the capabilities of that system, I maintain this sort of like, true, it's truly childlike because I've developed it using a toy. I mean, a childlike approach to recording. But that childlike approach didn't last forever. Around the time I graduated from college, I started experimenting with more multi-track recording. And then when I wanted everything to sound bigger and more pristine, and the rabbit hole it seemed to get to that sound was to get into using the effects that were built into my system. More than any other aspect of making music, twiddling the knobs on compressors and equalizers and other semi-sophisticated effects really triggered this always latent uh, perfectionism, obsessive sort of tendency that I have. I very quickly derailed all enthusiasm I had for not just recording my music, but even writing new music um, when I started dumping hours and hours into playing with like parametric EQs and multi-band compressors. I don't want to overstate it, but messing with those effects more or less killed my desire to do any recording. Every time I've tried to pick up recording again and develop some momentum, it's always been through these digital audio workstations, and I've always ended up in the exact same place. So that sort of brings me back to the original question. What happened? What changed? Why are you doing it now? And the answer is that I, sort of without knowing it, went back to basics. Uh, at the beginning of the quarantine period, I had some songs that were finished and that I hadn't recorded, and I just decided to make little demos of them on my cell phone using the Voice Memos app. And when I listened back to them, I really liked it. And I knew what had gone into those demos. I had just sat down and I played through a song that I knew. My focus was on finishing the song itself and then capturing the song in a performance. And that was it. Fast forward six or seven months, and I'm like doing these entire little live sets by myself in the shed behind my house um, and recording them and thinking, oh, this is starting to feel easy. Easy in the way that it felt when I was using a toy cassette player. It was the comfort that I got from that feeling and a little bit of, you know, that mixture of like delusion and pride that <laughs> makes people release things. That's what motivated me to actually release something that I had recorded in one of those live sessions, and then to try some of my own songs in the same way. And I've slowly built up from there. I'm not recording with my voice memos app anymore. I'm using this little pocket studio. Um, but the that thing works the same way. Hit record, see if something happens. If it does, keep it. If it doesn't, try again. That simple approach is what fosters the most growth and creativity, for me at least. And I think it's one of the reasons why other people are attracted to a dollless setup. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this, the five of you who are likely to watch it. Um, if you did, you know, please tell me about it. I'd love to hear it. Um, I really appreciate your time and I'll see you in the next one.